Well, my buddy Tim from Fat Man Fabrications is letting me drive this awesome 1967 Ford F100. It sounds great and it feels great. We're gonna show you how they did it coming up next on Motorhead Garage. Welcome to Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat. Now this is the series where we take all kinds of great aftermarket gear and show it off. Ways that you can make your car even better than it used to be. Now there's no way you can make this Ford F100 look any better, but you can make it perform better and feel like a modern vehicle. And that's where Fat Man Fabrications comes in. Brent, how did you get started in this business? Oh, it's a hobby gone berserk, really. I've always been a hot rodder, learned to drive on a Model A pickup. And I just found that I wanted something that was more modern, more capable on the road. Safer is, you know, one part of it, but just more reliable, handle better and all that. Be able to stay up with modern traffic. So that's what we went into. And how did you get started? What vehicles did you work on first? I had a career as an engineer and I went and started uh, this business in the backyard working on customers' cars one at a time. And then I found that I had some ideas on Mustang suspension in particular that I thought we could improve it. And I started putting those ideas into play on customers' cars and that developed into a manufactured product we could then sell to another guy. What kinds of things did you start doing differently from the start? Well, Bumpster was a big problem with some of the early Mustang II kits. There wasn't the understanding of geometry that we have today. And that's always been a favorite thing for me is to understand that. That's my engineering background, I guess. And uh, just drivability. You want a car that's totally predictable, that you can hand the keys to somebody that's never driven it before and you don't have to warn them about anything. The car should almost drive itself instinctively. Now, this is a 67. You're talking early 80s when you got started. At what point did you start to realize these cars from the 60s and early 70s just didn't handle that well? Oh yeah, uh, you know, from 48 or earlier, you've got to change the whole suspension. You really just have to. And these, they're okay, but they're not up to today's standards, particularly the Ford Twin I-Beam. A great work truck suspension, really not a good 85 mile an hour suspension. A lot of geometry issues. There's a lot of limitations to a Twin I-Beam design. And when you started particularly going from skinny nylon bias ply tires and you started putting wider radial tires with some serious grip on it, then the deficiencies of the suspension really, really show up. And, and when you update everything else on the car, the tires, the engine, and all that, you need to update the suspension because you overwhelm its capabilities. Do you think that the chassis and suspension sometimes get overlooked when upfitting a car? Yeah, I, I personally cringe when I see a car with a big motor and fat tires and a stock 1964 suspension. I'm going, you yeah, know, there's room for improvement. What are some of the things that you really like to focus on when you're building a chassis? Well, it has to fit right, number one, and it has to be very solid because no suspension is going to work right if the chassis is twisting. That went back to the Model T's, the chassis was part of the suspension, but on these you don't want that. An independent can't do its job if the frame is flexed, and so strength is a big, big issue. And uh, durability and fit are really big, and then putting a suspension in it that gives you the right stance, the right track width. There's different suspensions that are used that have problems with ride height or with track width that cause different problems and we have solutions for those. The Crown Vic front end on these Ford trucks in particular is an example. Stock front end is seven inches narrower than a Crown Vic so you can imagine the tire clearance problems that creates. Well our Mustang based suspension for that takes care of it. We have a new design we're coming out with that is uh, actually turning the twin I-beam into a true independent. I talk to a lot of engineers and they have a philosophy when they approach engineering. What's yours? Well, mine is function over everything else. Uh, I believe that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And if I can do the job uh, in the simplest way, I think it's more durable, it's stronger, and it also affects the price. Well, thanks for being here, Brent. I see you brought one of your employees, or I should say former employees. Now, Tim, you've been with the company for 16 years and you've carried on that same philosophy. How have you embodied that in this new piece that you brought? Well, this is one of our newest bolt-in kits uh, that we've been developing. We've kind of taken that same philosophy, that form over function. We're using as many OE style parts as we possibly can. They make things simpler for the customer down the road. But like I say, this is taking a old style car, modernizing it while allowing it to now take some of the modern drivetrains that some of these customers want in these older vehicles. The suspension will just make this car drive and ride a lot better. It will take the later Coyote engines that are becoming so popular now, along with still some of the earlier engines that a lot of guys are still using. It makes these a better driving, riding car, something that a customer can, if they choose to, use on a relatively regular basis. And this is for a Mustang? Yeah, this is for 65 through 70 Mustangs and Cougars right now. We've looked into expanding the line to the later vehicles and stuff, but that's part of the engineering process to see the feasibility of doing it in some of the other vehicles. You know, like anything else, the way the factory engineers any vehicle, 
they're all different. So you have to work within those parameters you're given from the factory to adapt, if you will, uh, what's going to work for that particular vehicle. It's not all kind of cookie cutter, one size fits all. It's got to fit that car and work with the geometry and the suspension setups or the structure that the factory has provided you. Now the GM folks are putting LS motors in and now with Ford it's the Coyote. So what have you done to accommodate such a large engine in this? Well, and that's exactly the thing. An LS or even the, the later Hemis are a much more compact engine design. So they're afforded a lot more room in a vehicle. The Coyotes, by nature, the, the dual overhead cam design, you've got those large cylinder heads they tend to get in the way of a lot of things. So with a vehicle like this, where Ford designed these with the, the shock towers, you're not fitting those in with those shock towers. Now the problem was with these, these cars, the way the structure was designed, these were one of the early unibody cars. Well, the suspension forces of those vehicles and the weight of that front end was designed to go into those shock towers through the bracing and ultimately into the firewall. Well, when you start cutting those shock towers out, you've lost half your structure. So the idea with doing this is with this internal plate here, that gussets that rail, if you will, even though it's really not a frame rail, strengthens up that. We've added the side bracing here now to, to kind of tie in there, but this kit also will include a set of plates to replace the, the shock towers, and we've incorporated in a similar system from the factory where you had your bracing that will ultimately go into the firewall. So you're maintaining that factory design of what Ford intended with that unibody structure. You're not weakening it, you're just giving it more room now for that Coyote. They still have their issues as far as, and this is part of the things we're working through, is what headers are going to work, what braking system, what mass cylinders and everything is going to work, what modifications may be required in the transmission tunnel area, because let's face it, these big six-speed and larger transmissions are a lot larger than an early C4 or even a C6. But this gets a basis to now work off of for those guys that are willing to do that to get those big coyotes in there. Well, you guys have thought of everything. I think that's pretty remarkable. You can check out Fat Man Fabrications at FatManFab.com. Find out what they can do for your classic hot rod. We will be right back with more Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat right after this. Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat is brought to you by Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. AP Laser, leading the way. And by Top Coat. Don't just coat it, top coat it. Fans of Motorhead Garage have surely seen steel rubber on the show before. And Danny, we know you guys are all about weather stripping and seals. But here are some things you brought with you that we may not have even thought of before. What'd you bring? So yeah, I brought some things that, you know, as you're going through your project, you may not have thought about. So I've got parts that are underneath the car or between the chassis and the suspension. Right here we have a splash apron. You know, this is the type of rubber that you see in the wheel wells or uh, between the radiator and the front bumper to keep all the water and dirt and debris out of the compartments. And this is a piece that's cut for a specific vehicle. We've got the holes placed to go up right where it was originally. It has the attachment pieces. We got the clips that go with that piece for this car. And this is a type of rubber that has a cloth insert, so it's like a very tough tensile strength type of rubber. And we've got other pieces underneath the car, like suspension, bushings, body mounting pads, gear shift boots, bumper bullets. You know, there's a lot of rubber pieces on a car that aren't just seals, but they're necessary for that really nice ride that you want. Now, how do I know that a part like this is going to be similar to what I had in my stock vehicle? Our customers have loved our year, make, model specific catalog. It shows all the parts that we have for your car, all these little pieces. If we have it for your car, it'll be in that catalog. They're free. We send them out to our customers every single day. It'll allow you to go through your car, check off everything that you need for your project, and make sure you don't miss any of those small pieces. Speaking of small pieces you might miss, what, what do we have right here? So that's like a drain for a cow. A lot of times those are really gone whenever you're working on an old car and you're going to get water in places you don't want water. So those are very important. You know, we have pedal pads, we have types that are slip on. What about uh, Cadillacs or, you know, certain brands that actually have their name stamped on the pedal? Yeah, we do have several licensed pieces for Cadillacs, LaSalle's, Chevy's, Cobra's, you know, that have that iconic emblem on the pedal. We also do revolk services where we take an original pedal, take all the rubber off, put new rubber on. We do motor mounts, stabilizer linkages. We do custom windshield gaskets for chop tops. There's a lot of things that we do that people don't know about, and we do have the resources for you to learn about them in our catalogs. What if I can't find the part I need in the catalog? You don't make something for my specific vehicle. 
So if we don't make something specific for your vehicle, we do have a large universal line and we've got a street rod section. So basically our universal has a lot of different types of profiles of weather stripping that you can use for your doors and your trunks, but also all of our generically shaped parts, if you're trying to make something work, are in that section. So if you're looking for a fuel net grommet and it just needs to be a circle, we have that available on our website. It's got all the dimensions so you can scroll through our catalog and see what we have for you. And I see some big pieces here. This is stemming from your universal line? Yeah, so once we had our universal parts, we had customers say, hey, can you make this? Uh, I'm working on an RV, do you have this? So we actually have developed an entire RV product line. While the universal stuff is great for the doors and the compartments, you know, RVs have these big giant slide outs and they take a specific seal and now we have those. A lot of our customers have several toys we make parts for them as well. And we even do boats now. You spend a few bucks on some seals and it can save your entire vehicle. Absolutely. And it really goes a long way for, you know, whenever you're camping, you got air drafts coming in or bugs or whatever, rain. None of that is ex the excitement of camping. So these seals work great. Now what happens if I have a part? How does the process work if I need something that you don't have? We have a excellent customer service staff. You can call in and they will walk you through the entire process. We also have all of our parts available online with dimensions so you can scroll through and look for yourself. We also have sample packs. So if you know you're working on a particular item, we can send you a sample pack like we have one for the window channel or one for kind of generic D-shaped seals, and this is for your slide outs. So if you're working on something specific, we can send you a pack and you can test fit and get exactly what you need. We've visited your place and if a customer sends in a part, that's something you guys keep in the library. We generally keep those originals. All, all the parts you see here are originals. And what that allows us to do is if we ever have any kind of issue with the part, we can go back to that original, see if there's an adjustment we need to make. And since we do our own machining and tooling, we're able to make that adjustment because we want to make the part right and work for the customer. So we have a huge library of original parts that we can use to verify that our parts are made right. Once you've made the part, how much R&D goes into testing that actual part? We test fit it on the car it came off of. We do a lot of research up front to see if it's a good part to make. And if it is, then we go through our marketing process to get it out to the customers. If you've got a vehicle you love, and I bet you do, Steel Rubber has parts that you are going to need, so you can check them out at steelrubber.com. We'll be right back with more Motorhead Garage presented by Topcoat right after this. Motorhead Garage presented by Topcoat coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Here on Motorhead Garage, we like to showcase classic vehicles like that 67 Ford pickup we saw earlier. One of our favorite stops so far, though, has been at the Ford Bronco Super Celebration, where Bronco owners came together to celebrate their love for the classic Ford truck. It's a 1966 U13 Bronco. The U13 was built to compete with the Jeep Wrangler, and it has a fold-down windshield on it. It's got a 170 cubic inch six-cylinder engine in it, three-speed transmission. This one has a live PTO Koenig winch set up in it. You actually start the vehicle, put the transfer case in neutral, and it's got a second shift on the side. You put it in gear, and you run the winch with the gear shift. This particular U13, the 66, had silver mist interior in it. The dash was color keyed to the same color only that year. They've got one-off hubcaps on them. I've seen guys pay as much as $1,000 for a hubcap. No parking lights. It's got a teardrop tailgate on it. It's different than the 67 and up. They changed the taillights out on it. It's got square end cut bumpers on it. All kind of options. They were made this way with plastic fiberglass inserts. No doors, no top. Just the way you see this one's the way it came off the showroom floor. In the three years that they made the U13, they only made 4,090. Lately, we found out that there's probably only a couple hundred of those left. And out of that, there's probably 65 to 70 of them in running condition. Built to this quality, there's probably less than, you know, 15 or 20 of them. There's evidence of a few around them sold for over 100,000 now. Like I bought it two years ago in a salvage yard, took it home and took it completely apart. Every nut and bolt and everything's been completely out of it and spent about, you know, about a year and a half on it. Got me addicted and into the bronchitis, I guess. And I just play with them all the time. I've probably had 300 of them. Time now for the lowdown with Magic Creeper. 
All right, well, you may have an enormous toolbox in your garage or workshop or a whole line of cabinets, maybe even two big toolboxes. But I tell you what, you do not have the ultimate tool until you have the Magic Creeper. The Magic Creeper is the most versatile thing you will have. It's going to also help you use all of your tools to their fullest extent. Why? Because the Magic Creeper can get under anything. Super low ground clearance if you need to get under the vehicle. You can do it in the driveway. You can do it on your shop floor. Average Creepers are going to be about four inches above the ground. And uh, believe me, there are a lot of cars that are only eight inches off the ground and it's really tough to get underneath. If you have the Magic Creeper, it has zero ground clearance, which means you are able to have all kinds of extra space when you go under the vehicle. Now, once you get under there, you can move four or five feet, which allows you to travel over halfway across some of the widest vehicles on the road. The Magic Creeper is a continuous loop that rolls upon itself, and there's a special material with a low coefficient of friction on the inside. On the outside, it's a polyurethane coated material that's water, oil, and puncture resistant. It is super easy to clean. All you have to do is wipe it off with any simple degreaser and a rag, and you are all set to go. The Magic Creeper also stores really easily. You can roll it right up, keep it under your car seat, keep it in your trunk. It is always ready when you need it, and you need to pick it up before you need it. It's the Magic Creeper. You can find it at magiccreeper.com. That's the only place you can find the original Magic Creeper. Don't accept any substitutes. To get the best engine performance, drivability, and fuel economy, change your air filter. Real simple to do. On our Malibu here, man, nothing more than just coming around, pulling these two screws out. Now I'm going to pull these two out, but I want you to check a couple things while you're doing your vehicle. Look around, make sure there's no vacuum hoses plugged into the air box here. Ours actually has a mass airflow sensor located right there, and the box is okay. I don't have to pull the air ducting out. I'm pretty sure I can just pull this up right here and sneak it out of there, which is pretty cool. Now, if you look at this air filter here, it actually doesn't look too bad, but I got a pretty cool trick for you. If I take this light and I shine it through there, on the dirty spots you can see it gets a little brighter, but it, oh, it looks pretty good, but check this out. Here's the new one versus the old one. So you can see it really shine through that one all the way across, no problem. That makes all the difference in the world. Now, to put it back in, just reverse the procedure. I'm gonna tuck it back in there pretty nicely, get the clips back there. Pop it down, secure it, re-secure the screws, you'll be good to go. Make sure your air cleaner is nice and clean, don't have any lean conditions or problems, get the best drivability out of your vehicle. Well, do not go far because we have more Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat coming up right after this. Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat is brought to you by Stage 8 Fasteners, home of the world's best locking header bolts. Locking kits now available for all turbo applications. Go to stage8.com. DTO Customs, obsessed with custom Jeeps and trucks. 304 Off-Road, providing you with side-by-side -side parts and accessories. Build it, break it, fix it, repeat. And by Tribotex, make your engine last longer. Now here at the headquarters for NHOU Protective Coatings, it's, it's a magnificent facility. We've got training area, we've got a laboratory, and Joe, thousands of vehicles go through here every year to get the undercoating they need, but really this started kind of selfishly for you with only one vehicle in mind. Desperation. Yeah, I lost too many vehicles to rust, and um, I, I buy pickup trucks, they're fifty, sixty thousand dollars I couldn't afford to keep doing it, and I would not take no for an answer that there was nothing I could do. And I know that in my neighborhood, people were saving their vehicles through doing this thing, you know, undercoating oil at night, and I knew it was effective. How did you begin the research? So what I did was I realized, you know, how oil-based rust proofing works, and I found some products that were not engineered necessarily for that application, but they were close. And I, I didn't want to use the old school used motor oil. Uh, because it was illegal and frankly wasn't good for the environment. So we found a chemist ultimately to make our own formula because all the products that I used off the shelf were generic and they just didn't live up to my expectations. So ultimately we found this chemist who made our own products engineered for the application. What was the response from folks once you started doing it for other people? It was incredible. We started out offering it to just friends and family and before you know it, in a busy week, I would have people coming out to my garage in the middle of nowhere on a dirt road, traveling two and a half, three hours to get to us, and I realized just how pervasive rust was and the enormity of that problem and, and realized that we were onto something. 
I had people business propositioning me all the time. You know, hey, let's let's do this here, let's do this there, and it's kind of evolved into what it is today. People love it because it's a great product and it works. And where can they find you? NHOilUndercoating.com. Now we're going to blind you a little bit with some science here. I've been reading a lot of articles on additives for your oil and for your engine and Pasha, a lot of them are talking about Molly. Uh, what does it do and is it a good solution for what you want to do in an engine? Molybdenum disulfide came from the applications in space to one very peculiar automotive application. It's a CV joint in cars. What we have in CV joints is exactly the same what we have in space. The material, molybdenum disulfide, is sealed hermetically inside of the booth. But everybody know, the moment the booth have slightest crack on it that let moisture and air in it, the moly, molybdenum disulfide, molybdenum turns into molybdenum trioxide, which is abrasive and sulfur with water, turns into sulfuric acid, which is corrosive. Both of those components very quickly eat out the CV joint and it starts cracking when you turn. In engine and in space, this application works only for a short time when there is no moisture. But inside of the engine, there's always combustion present that produce water, so it's not a long-term solution. It is great for racing because the engine only runs for a short time, but the object here is to make your engine go longer and go better, and that's how Tribotex helps, right? You are right, for racing applications, it's a perfect solution because engine runs for a very short time and, and then usually a car goes in a trailer. If you want to keep your car outside in the rain and drive it year around, Tribotex, which consists from oxides that attach to the surface and form ceramic film around your cylinders, that's the perfect solution year around and for long term. You can find out how Tribotex can actually keep your engine alive and even bring it back from damage. Check them out at Tribotex.com. Well, the bad news is we are out of time for this episode, but the good news is we'll be back again next week. In the meantime, you can check out our Facebook page, see what we're up to, maybe drop us a note. And by the way, you can drop Jeff a note at Jeff at MastersTV.com if you have something you'd like to see on the show, maybe a new product or some cool idea you'd like to see. Until then, we will see you next time on Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat.